And now, the general weather around Alaska. Welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm National Weather Service meteorologist Peter Chan coming to you on this Saturday, September 9th, 2023. And if you'd like additional weather information I provide on this YouTube broadcast, you can always go to weather.gov. That is the National Weather Service's online presence. It'll bring you to a map of the continental U.S. with Alaska and Hawaii to the lower left. You point and click anywhere on this map. It'll pull up a forecast with any relevant watches, warnings, or advisories anywhere in the country. On the map this Saturday afternoon of note, we have severe thunderstorm watches for areas of the Mid-Atlantic, including Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Southern New York, flood watches out through areas of West Virginia, Virginia into Western North Carolina, heat advisories in Texas, another severe thunderstorm watch back towards uh, central Nebraska. And we have red flag warnings for areas of the desert there of Southern California down into Southwest Arizona. Here in Alaska, the most uh, important uh, weather a uh, warning we have out at the present time is a flood warning that impacts the Kenai Lake and Kenai Upper Kenai River due to the Snow River Glacier uh, Dam release that's ongoing. I'll highlight that in a moment. We also have wind advisories in effect for the Upper Koyukuk Valley and Central Alaska Range through uh, early Sunday morning. And then looking ahead into next week and the following week, new moon phase occurs in the evening of September 14th and the fall equinox arrives late Friday evening on September 22nd. Overall, we're just going to continue to see a rather progressive early fall pattern across the state through next week. Quick check of a couple of the uh, FAA webcams this Saturday afternoon. Alakaket, where there is a wind advisory in effect, uh, 51 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. You can see some hints of early fall color there. And Cooper Landing, which is under a flood warning from Cooper Landing down to Skelac Lake because of this push of higher water from that glacier dam relief uh, from the Snow River, is partly sunny and 52 this afternoon. And uh, Along the river there, you definitely have to keep an eye on things because the highest water is expected on Sunday. So here, looking at the wind advisories that are in effect this Saturday evening through into Sunday morning, include the upper Koyukuk Valley uh, around Bettles and Alakaket. Winds out of the east, southeast could gust as high as 35 to 50 miles an hour. And then down here across the central Alaska range, we do anticipate in the vicinity of uh, Donnelly and uh, Isabel Pass, some wind gust in the higher terrain around there, upwards around uh, 45 to maybe 55 miles an hour. Further south, we have the flood warnings there along Kenai Lake and the upper Kenai River due to this glacier dam release. Now here is the hydrograph for Cooper Landing and the forecast anticipates a crest of the water level up to about 14 and a half feet around or shortly after noon on Sunday. So there's gonna be a rapid rise of water coming up here as we go through this evening, overnight, and then into Sunday morning. So all boaters, especially fishermen, trying to maneuver uh, drift boats or uh, any sort of raft. You're gonna have some maneuverability issues, maybe debris in the water. Last year when this happened, there were a lot of big uh, hunks of wood and even whole trees coming down the river. And also for weight in fishermen, very hazardous, high swift flows. Everybody should have a, a life jacket on if they're gonna be uh, daring to venture out in those conditions. But at least now it looks like instead of getting up into moderate uh, flood stage, uh, the river will crest a bit below that into minor flood stage. Now on the east end of Kenai Lake, there could also be flooding, especially toward the end of Primrose uh, Road and also Primrose Campground. Some minor flooding possible near the boat launches in the end there of Primrose uh, Road as a result of this glacier dam release uh, and that would likely come sometime overnight, uh, early Sunday morning before quickly falling off again. So hopefully this event will be over with rather quickly here before uh, by the time we get into early next week, water levels should be coming back down again. Satellite imagery shows, generally speaking, there's just a broad area of low pressure across this region. And we're getting south, southwesterly flow ahead of it coming across the Gulf, pulling moisture into areas of the interior. We had a low yesterday 
uh, that worked its way northward and weakened, but it's brought gustier winds to the Alaska Range. That's why we have those wind advisories for southeast to south winds and then easterly winds there north of Fairbanks through the upper Koyukuk Valley with a scattering of light showers. Showers extend back to areas of the southwest. And here, this is the uh, most significant low we're going to have to contend with now through early next week. It's now south of the Alaska Range in the North Pacific, and it's going to work its way northeastward up into the Gulf and just kind of gradually weaken as we go into early next week. So the low as of this Saturday afternoon, 988 millibar center, so not that impressive, but it does have some breezy conditions around it, some gale force winds. We have another uh, trough that's kind of what's left of the low that lifted up into the interior and a weaker low well southwest of Haida Gwaii, south of the Gulf, very weak high pressure along uh, the eastern Russian coast, uh, not too much to that. The overall pattern is just going to feature these weak areas of low pressure in various positions here across the mainland, down into the Gulf and back toward the Bering. There's still no signs of any really strong storms, and the low I just spoke of, the one south of the Alaska Peninsula in the North Pacific, will gradually weaken as it heads off toward the east-northeast here into early next week. And so uh, associated with these features, there's not super heavy precipitation, but areas are going to pick up uh, some lighter rain, even snow showers in the higher elevations of the mountains there around uh, the Alaska Range, uh, Talkeetna's, and on over toward uh, uh, Wrangell, St. Elias. Monday, still more of the same, just a broad area of low pressure here across much of the mainland back toward the Bering Sea and just a general, these are the surface low pressures in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere steering these features. There's just kind of this general circulation like this, which is going to keep the west southwest side of the state cooler below normal than what we'd expect now here as we kind of squeak out the last technical days of astronomical summer. Looking at low temperatures in the 50s across the panhandle, if there's any clearing, quickly dip into the 30s, places that become partly cloudy to mostly clear briefly tonight. And then Sunday afternoon, pretty nice and warm central southern panhandle, at least uh, mid, maybe even some upper 60s back toward the west, cooler, generally highs in the 50s, kind of gives you that early fall feel even despite maybe a little sun here and there. And low temperatures Monday morning, upper 40s to low 50s panhandle, generally 40s, some isolated upper 30s there in south central, generally 50s for highs, including the Anchorage Bowl, still back up around 60 or so in some areas of the panhandle, especially in the south toward Klawak and on over toward Ketchikan. Now in the far north, we're gonna see low temperatures generally above freezing in most areas, 30s and 40s and temperatures will be warmest near 60 at Fort Yukon and Fairbanks on Sunday afternoon. Generally in the 40s along the Arctic coast, uh, back through the Chukchi Sea coastline, Seward Peninsula around uh, Norton Sound, upper 40s to near 50 degrees. And lows again, generally mid 30s to lower 40s, pretty common if you can get some clearing. You could see uh, some isolated areas down around or a bit below freezing. And Monday afternoon temperatures will be a bit cooler around Fairbanks. Uh, but could squeeze out 64 there over at uh, Eagle along the Alcan border. Otherwise, cooler temperatures in the 40s along the Arctic coast and back through much of the Seward Peninsula and, of course, back towards St. Lawrence. Sunday morning lows across the southwest interior, lower 40s, uh, lower mid 40s along the Aleutian chain, a little warmer further west, even out 50, 50 or so there toward uh, Shimia and Attu. And as we go into Sunday afternoon, uh, temperatures will struggle to reach the lower 50s at Bethel and Anvik. Uh, generally in the 50s along the Alaska Peninsula back through the eastern Aleutians. And Monday morning lows generally in the lower 40s. Again, if there's some breaks in the clouds, you could easily dip into the 30s. Otherwise, lows along the Alaska Peninsula back through the eastern Aleutians will be generally in the mid to upper 40s. And again, high temperatures across much of the region for Monday will generally be between, between 50 and say 55 degrees, a few spots, maybe a couple degrees warmer than that. Looking ahead through mid-month, September 15th through the 19th, the National Weather Service's Climate Prediction Center, six to 10 day temperature outlook cause shows that the greatest potential for above normal temperatures will be north of the upper Yukon River, uh, the eastern half of the Brooks Range, eastern portion of the North Slope with near normal temperatures across the southern half of the mainland, 
uh, the Aleutians in through the Alaska Peninsula and the Southeast Panhandle. Rain, though, could uh, be a bit above normal, south central, southeast interior, through the northeastern Gulf, and in through the Panhandle because we're continuing to see just this broad circulation with south-southwest flow coming in off the Gulf, so that would tend to enhance precipitation across the southeastern portion of the state.